Good evening, folks, and welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and the simulcast is on the air now from CBS Radio and Television. It is Thursday night, December 21st, 1995. And my friend Tom McComas, and tonight we travel down memory lane for the toy trains of Christmas. I look forward to this every year because they have brought me joy since I'm a little kid. I'll tell you a funny story about me and Lionel trains, or all electric trains, really. Uh, the first one I received from Santa Claus was in 1941, and my father, who was Santa Claus, uh, went out and bought two of these train sets, one for me and one for my cousin, Mike Regan. And so, you know, my father and uh, his brother-in-law would play Santa at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I later learned how much fun this was. I opened up a Lionel train set one year, and there were eight pieces of straight track in the box. It's awful tough to make them go when you have eight at 2 o'clock in the morning and you got half a load on, let's face it, a full load. So anyway, uh, they, they, they went over to, uh, to uh, my cousin's house and they set up his set of trains and it ran perfectly. And they came back and they set up my set of trains, as my father told me later, uh, the engine began to smoke. And this was long before smoke was a feature on electric trains. It just <laughs> blew up right there on the floor. And I've been smitten by them and confounded by them ever since. Did you know that in 1953, the Lionel Corporation made 622,000 locomotives? They made 2.4 million cars all in one year. Uh, they were not the only manufacturer. There was, of course, American Flyer. There was Ives until the mid-1930s, and of course the trains made by Lewis Marks, Marks Toys, which were sold in the dime stores, you know, Woolworths and Kreskys. They were cheaper, bottom-of-the-line sets, but they were cute, and they exist as great collectibles even to this very day. Uh, the newest trend in toy trains are these furnished to us tonight by the people at Allied Model Trains in Culver City, California. They are large-scale trains, and this one is outfitted for Christmas. Let her rip. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? I especially, of course, you know, you know the accessory that I'm batty for on this particular train set would be, would be the water tower. Except that the water tower has the incorrect name on it. Water tower says, season's greetings. Water tower ought to say, Tom Snyder. Water tower coming up on your screen any second now. Magic of TV. That's a good looking one, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah put it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you all know that one of the passions of my life is electric trains. I talk about them constantly, and the same is true for my good friend Tom McComas, video filmmaker for the past 20 years. He has put together one of the best-selling videos ever. It's called I Love Toy Trains. It looks like this. Uh, there they are. The miracle of television. His latest video is called A Lionel Christmas. We're happy to have Tom with us on The Late Late Show. We did a show over at CNBC a couple years back that they're still talking about. They weren't watching it, but they talked about it. <laughs> what, are you, what were your first trains as a kid, Thomas? Uh, I did have trains as a kid, and um, it wasn't an elaborate setup. It was uh, like a four by eight board Same, yeah. and a uh, couple of trains running around. And they were great fun when you're seven, eight, nine years old. But then as you get older, other things compete for right. your interest. Sure, sports and, and ladies. And girls. And, yeah. and uh, what I did to kind of spice things up is when I was home alone, I would go up in my um, uh, father's room and look for his lighter fluid. And I remember I'd, he'd hit it in the sock drawer, and I would root around, and it was a red and yellow tin can, blue and yellow tin can with a red spout. I think it was either Zippo or Dunhill. And I would go down in the train room. Couldn't be just Ronson, it'd be and, Zippo. And I, and I, and I, well, Zippo. And I took a, I would spray a line across the track. And then uh, I would douse the train in lighter fluid. And then uh, uh, turn all the lights off, light the line of fire, and whoosh, a burst of fire sure, would go yeah, up. Yeah. Then I'd run the train through the line oh, of fire, geez. and the entire train would burst into flames. And it was just marvelous, my own special fireball <laughs> express. And, 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 and the, you know, I'm telling this, and the collectors out in the audience are... No, the, fifth, the, the seven- and eight-year-old kids are out there, too. No, they're asleep. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> and, it, and I did this, you know, I, well, actually, if you've ever ignited lighter fluid, and I'm sure you have... Oh, it explodes. You know that it burns quickly, evaporates, right. maybe 10, 12 seconds it blazes, mm -hmm. and then it settles down. But I did this quite often, and the, um, the, the, the engine was, was die-cast metal. It just got blacker. But the cars were plastic, and they kind of got Funny. misshapen Funny, and, and yeah. distorted. Yeah. And then, as irony would have it, 30, 35 years later, I'm doing all these trains, uh, videos and books about toy trains, and I'm doing a story in San Diego, and the guy has a magnificent setup, big layout in the middle of the room, and trains all over the shelves on, on the walls. And when we get all done with the shoot... Who is this, he, Sefton? 
uh, I think so. He brings me into his living room and he says, Tom, I would like to show you how it all got started. This is the first train set my dad gave me when he was five years old. And there it is in pristine condition under glass. And then he asked me, did you have a train set when you were a kid? <laughs> and I look at his, like the day it was born, and I think of my distorted, black and twisted, burnt out hawks that used to be my train set. And I said, no, uh, I actually know I never did have a train set. <laughs> but, but let me add one thing. You know, thing. if you get some of this, the funny stuff into the videos, you know. The <laughs> <laughs> I want to add one thing to that. That was a youthful indiscretion. And I have since taken a 12-step respect for toy train program. Uh -huh. And I haven't set fire to a toy train in, oh, 35, 40 years. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to toy trains? They went away for a while, like in about 1965, 66. Well, the 60s. Toy, trains were big in the 50s, but not in the 60s. Where'd they go? What happened? Well, Slot cars? Or? Fads. T t trains come and go. T t toys come and go. And I think the enduring quality of trains and the reason they have survived for 100 years, Lionel will be celebrating its 100th anniversary in the year 2000, is because, number one, of the quality. Uh, you, can't, you can't get away, with the, away from the fact that the trains were very well built. And also, they're fun to play with, so they'll come and go, but uh -huh. they always come back. Yeah, and uh, American Flyer, uh, they're still produced by Lionel Trains, they're, aren't they? They're produced by Lionel. Uh, Marks? Marks is, uh, there's a new Marks Corporation producing trains outside of Chicago, and they are just started about a year ago, and they're producing, uh, they'll be producing, they just had their first catalog, and they're back in business. Anyway, we, we, we've got some of your videos, and I want to get as much action as we can here to show people what can be done with imagination. Do these need your narration, or are these self- Well, we'll, we'll look at the monitor. All right, okay. The, fir the first one too. is called Elaborate Layouts. So okay. uh, roll that, and, uh, and Tom, you'll take us through this, okay? okay. This is, uh, these are two layouts uh, designed by Broadway set designer Clark Dunham. One is in Des Moines, Iowa. Oh. The other is in Williamsburg, Virginia. This is a railroad, American Railroads on Parade. He is, uh, his layouts feature elaborate backdrops. Oh, my goodness. This is Dick Coon's car rail layout in Detroit. And I think it's the biggest pre-war layout ever built. It's 1,500 square feet. He was the former owner of Lionel Trains. He still retains part of ownership. This is uh, a layout in, in Pennsylvania, uh, a copy of the Horseshoe Curve oh, in uh, Altoona, that Phil Klopp's layout. This is Stan Roy, the man who owns the world record for simultaneous train operation. I think he runs 36 trains at one time. <laughs> oh, Everybody seems to have a different area of interest, either beauty or run the most trains at one time or have the most beautiful original standard gauge equipment. What's this? This is the Lionel uh, Visitor Center in Chesterfield, Michigan. And this is an example of a, a beautiful American flyer layout. It's in Seattle, Washington, and uh, Mike Colosseus built layout. These layouts are like, I mean, they take a lot of work, and they're like works of art. You know, you know the thing that, uh, that strikes me, because I have a little layout at home, nothing as elaborate as this, but I finished off my attic to have a place to run my trains. Maintenance is a key operation here. I mean, these, you know, track has to be clean, the motors have to be lubricated, wheels have to be uh, oiled. There's a lot of maintenance and meticulous care involved with these things. They, they don't just keep running forever with no maintenance, you know. But that's part of the enjoyment, tinkering with the trains, oiling them, maintaining them. No, no, that's not part of the enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> not when your eyesight starts to go. And black locomotives with well, black screws. And you can't, uh, the, the second one, and then we'll do the break, is called the Hall of Fame. So these are what, famous electric right, trains? Right, these are uh, trains that have uh, collector items from starting with the 20s, I believe. That's a Lionel State set made in 1929. It's the, there were two versions, one brown and one green. Big, huh? Big, standard gauge. All these are standard gauge. Before the war, homes were big, so trains were big. This is the Blue Comet. Some people think that's the most beautiful train ever built. Two-tone blue. Uh, the cars were amazing. They were uh, 21 inches long. There was detail on the inside, swivel seats. This is the American Flyer Mayflower, chrome-plated. Uh, also made in 1929. And we're looking here at 20s and 30s technology. Right. Wow. That's a lot not... of hand. This is the, uh, uh, some people consider this the most, uh, the best mass-produced scale model ever built. It's the 1937 scale Hudson. And the GG1, a model of the uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Railroad designed by Lowy. Wasn't he the guy that designed the Coca-Cola right. bar? Yeah. And this is the best-selling train 
ever made. It's the Santa Fe Lionel F3. And uh, the technology, though, of the state sets and the blue comets made in the in the in the 30s, the 20s and the 30s. I mean, th they were really ahead of their time in many ways in terms of, of, of mass-produced quality and mass-produced attention to detail. It's unbelievable what well, they had. Well, compared to other toys of the time, yeah. they definitely were. Which is why they've lasted. They're right, still around. Exactly. We'll continue with Tom McComas. Uh, 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 one of his videos is called The Lionel Christmas. The toll-free is up and running, but I suspect we'd rather look at the choo-choos. We'll see what happens right after these messages. Hey, now Santa comes and he brings his Christmas magic. Choo-choo toys give everyone such joy. I am dreaming of a Lionel Christmas. I'm beaming it's a Lionel Christmas. There ain't no way I'm gonna sleep tonight. And I hope Santa gets my address right. Tom Snyder, would you like to be a rider on a Lionel train with me? Hey, Tom Snyder, would you like to be a rider? Traveling around that Christmas tree. Streaking across that countryside. All aboard, everybody for a thrilling ride. I be on time for a front row seat. I get a ready for fun that can't be beat. <laughs> Desecrating fine Lionel equipment <laughs> to put our logo on it. What the hell's when, the matter with you? <laughs> when in recognition of your long-standing enthusiastic and affection uh, and support of Lionel Trains, when the folks at Lionel found out I was going to be on your show mm -hmm. again, they made this special train up just for you, one of a kind, and they want me to present it to you. Wow. It, it consists of their flagship locomotive, the Chesapeake and Ohio Streamline Hudson. Oh, my goodness. And this uh, one-of-a-kind Chesapeake and Ohio observation car that is complete with the Late Late Show graphics, your signature, oh my and your picture in almost oh every window. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> there it is. Oh, that is wonderful. And I know you'll enjoy it. I certainly will, and my thanks to the people at Lionel Trains. That is very, very, very nice. Jeez. <laughs> they desecrated a look. Now we'll go out to the collector's meets. This will bring the big bucks. Right? <laughs> wait, a, wait, wait a while. I, wait, believe wait, me. Wait a couple uh, years. Uh, I'm gonna, my, my, aunt, my heirs will, will still have it. <laughs> right. uh, now the next one is called, and thank you for the, to all the folks at Lionel Trains. I appreciate that more than I can tell you. Where were the rest of the cars? No, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the car, four or five cars. Yeah, the sleeping car, the dining car. That's yeah. no, a joke. Ne next year we'll <laughs> yeah, do right. It's a joke. Please. <laughs> Uh, Christmas layouts. What people do at Christmas time? Uh, well, obviously, I've like, got the videotape coming. Okay, toy trains and Christmas have become synonymous over the years. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun! It is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. All right, look out. Dashing through that snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Out the fields we go laughing oh, oh, oh. all that way. Are those bells and bobtails ring? Are they making those spirits bright? What fun it is to ride and sing Sling song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Play. A ring a ding ding. Those are absolutely beautiful. By the way, you make all these videos, don't you? You That's and your true, team. True. And now the last one are the darn things that we all had. Did you have the the accessories too, like the cattle car and the milk car? I had those. They they had cars, folks, where cows would run around. Uh, I remember going in out of the box car, and a guy would deliver milk cans on a platform, and a bridge would go up and down. And here are some that Tom and his crew have captured on videotape and to tell us what we're seeing. Oh, yeah. This is an American flyer. Uh, this is a mixture of Lionel and American Flyer. 
They all worked pretty well. Uh, the milk car was a little erratic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they did amazing things. It was unbelievable for its time. This is what, 50s technology. Oh, this was great fun, the magnetic crane. Right. My brother and I used to load the car, unload the car for hours. You'd go hours on end, but the milk cans always, barrel uh, the, yeah, the barrel loader. The... Oh, and then the sound of the motor. They all had buzzes. These evoke incredible memories in people. When they see it, they, uh, you know, everyone's got a train story. <laughs> but when you think of the imagination of the design engineers that went into this stuff, huh? It's remarkable what they did with the uh, with vibrate. Look at here, the horses. Yeah. And the yeah. Look at these guys. They're on speed. You know. Yeah. They're the cops. The water tower. That's good. The gateman. Bang. <laughs> But with, uh, with little motors and vibrating mechanisms, they, they, they brought model railroading, toy train railroading to life. In fact, one of the reasons I stayed with toy trains as opposed to scale models was I like this kind of, oh, look at this. That's the rocket launcher. Yeah. Blast off. <laughs> he happened to be a uh, rocket scientist, by the way, who built that layout. Is that right? Anyway, listen, I thank you for coming in and doing this with us tonight. It brings back memories, I hope, for the crowd back here. And no, they don't have them where you drop the pellet in the smokestack anymore, do they? No, that's true. They have liquid now. All right. Happy Christmas from Tom McComas and TM Books and Videos. Thanks to the people at Lionel for the wonderful toy, which my granddaughter will treasure under her Christmas tree this year. Thanks, Tom.